<laughs> well, some of us have been reminiscing, some of us have been learning, but we've all been taking a look back at Terry McFadden's illustrious career here all morning, and he's been taking us inside some pretty cool places, too. Yeah, we used to do a series called Off Limits, and one of those places was the Lighthouse at St. Joseph, which you see a lot. Check it out. Time rolls on in St. Joseph. And over time, thousands of eyes have been drawn to this bold, yet beautiful beacon. They started building it around 1906, and it became operational. This with the outside light at uh, 1908. But few eyes have seen what's behind its metal skin. But thanks to the Coast Guard, we'll look and learn about that which lies within the lighthouse. So at one time, did somebody actually live? The no, it was never manned. Uh, it's always been maintained by different people. Actually, it started out members of the community. Like the butcher who turned the light off heading into work and on as he headed home. And like the lake, getting to the lighthouse can be treacherous. Ready? You go first. <laughs> <sighs> uh, it's not great, so I can tell you that. There you go. Next, a climb up to unlock the past. This is it. Cool. The lower level at one time housed a generator. Now it's virtually empty except for some equipment and circuit breakers. A spiral staircase takes us to the second level. As you come up into here, uh, this is really nothing. Uh, there was no shot behind me, and that was the old door to the catwalk for when the keeper came through using the catwalk. Wouldn't this make a great apartment? <laughs> <laughs> Coast Guard should lease this out to somebody. Another ladder, another level. <laughs> Here you'll find the foghorn, which is now fully automated, but turned off during the winter months. It activates when visibility is less than one nautical mile. If you look on the outside of the lighthouse, you'll find two tubes. One emits a light. The light will bounce back almost like a radar and get absorbed into the second one. Once that area closes to one mile, then that activates the automatic foghorn. The foghorn's located on the outside light. Finally, we reach the top. Oh, now I know why they call this the lighthouse. It's exactly. Light in here. It gets a little thin up top here as we go along. This is actually the area that houses the light. The light, right now we're 53 feet above the water. Uh, the light that the light, lighthouse emits, you can be seen for 16 miles out into the lake. And while many things here have changed, some things remain the same. For instance, this Fresnel lens is the original, and it still serves a basic purpose. It remains a beacon for many a boater navigating in the darkness. But things like global satellite tracking has diminished the role of the lighthouse, especially for the larger ships. So now the lighthouse serves more of an aesthetic role on the lake. And for the few who have been up here, the view of all that surrounds it is nothing short of breathtaking. And be forewarned if you attempt to see what we have seen from this vantage point. And we will prosecute you if we catch you on our lighthouse. I That's love that his stuff ends with a warning every time. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's important to know. Not only can you be prosecuted, it's, I mean, you take your life in your hands. And, and you saw that they were doing that about this time of year, probably in February, something like that. Uh, it is quite dangerous to do that. But, you know, really interesting, too. I mean, that lighthouse has such an amazing history. It's such an iconic piece. And to be able to go out there and, and be inside it is pretty amazing. I mean, Off, off Limits was the name of the series. And yeah. he definitely got to go into some amazing places and do mm -hmm. great things. I mean, and he can't be afraid of heights. That's what I was thinking. Like, he can't be scared <laughs> of, of heights. But. Well, and, you know, the, the weather was fairly calm that day that they were out there. But when if you've been out there, I mean, if you've seen from a distance from our Skyview shot, there are times where those waves, when they break against the pier, that water goes all the way up over. That's 53 feet off the surface of the water, and the spray is still coming up that high. Sometimes those waves out there, 10, 12 feet, unbelievable. So, you know, well, it's, it's rocking and rolling. It is a shame with the housing prices that you can't live there, because that would be a nice yeah. little studio apartment. It was actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be up there. A little bit dangerous, I Just think. Just a little bit. Yeah. So, anyway.